Hey, welcome to church here today. I'm Pastor Brent. I get to lead this amazing place called Pearl Street Church. Just wanted to thank you for joining us today. We believe it's the best church in a 50 yard radius. We've been leading here in downtown San Antonio for the past four and a half years with the mission to see unchurched people to come to know Jesus Christ. Now you're here today, I just wanna say thank you. Enjoy the rest of your time as you get to be here and experience all that God is doing right here inside of Pearl Street Church. continuing our series power moves and we are diving into God's word just see where God's power is on display little disclaimer uh, I thought we were going one direction but in preparation God has kind of takes a different direction so we're jumping into a conversation on the power of the Holy Spirit that is existent to us so we're going to dive all up in this and get after it I may this is more maybe a little more teachy than uh, what you've ever known but that's what it's going to be and uh, so take some notes if you want to get to heaven so make sure you take some notes <laughs> And uh, elbow your neighbor whenever, uh, whenever they, they need to hear something. And elbow them when they, you need to hear something. And nobody will know the difference, right? Now, we, uh, as you saw last week, big church, uh, big building last week. We were able to see over 3,000 people join. The greater thing, 3,036 people raised their hand to receive Jesus for the first time last week. Amen. Let's go. So if you're new around here, we leverage everything we have for the sake of seeing unchurched people come to know Jesus. We're here to make a difference inside of our city. This is not playing games. We show up every single week to make a difference in lives that then go make a difference inside of our city. So when lives are transformed like that, a celebration goes on in heaven, and you better believe a celebration goes down inside of our church. So we're stoked about what God did last week, and we're ready to continue the process of sanctification and discipleship as people are growing inside of their faith. So um, as we jump into this conversation here today, as I said, we're going to jump into the power uh, of the Holy Spirit. The look, what does that look like inside of our lives? And, um, you know, as we talked about last week, and, and you want to write this down, the power uh, of God raised Jesus from the dead. That, that is what happened. That's the greatest power move that we have seen upon the face of the earth when God's power took Jesus out of the grave and raised him back to life. Every other individual upon the face of the earth has a grave. They have a place in which their body exists, but Jesus Christ has no grave. There was a tomb, but he came out of the tomb. His body does not exist there. He was raised to life. Every person can make a crazy claim on who they are. Jesus made a claim and then delivered on it. God, by the power of God, delivered on it. And if he has been raised to life, that's the power that we get. We get the, we get the excitement. Man, we receive eternal life just like Jesus does. Now I'll tell you, God's power did that, raised him back to life. And when he does that, you and I are in this position now that whenever we come to a place on free will, okay, we can do whatever we want to do. We can make the decisions that we want to make. It's, it's, it's the free will that God has given every single one of us inside of this room that we can go and do. Like if we want to, whatever, if we want to worship another God, if we want to just live for ourselves, we want to gain and attain, we can do. It's the free will of God and praise God for that, right? Praise God we don't have a God that's up there like you have to do this and he's beating us upside the head. Right? You can do what you want to do. But the beauty is when you come to a place, you and I come to a place to say, man, we believe God is the God, the all-powerful God, Elohim, the all-powerful God. He's in control of everything. And man, this all-powerful God saw humanity and the brokenness of humanity and provided a way, he sent his son to die for us. And we believe that that is the almighty God that prov provided a way that you and I now could receive eternal life. We can receive salvation he did that for us, that love expression, then us as Christians, or individuals as Christians, come to a place to say, God has given us free will, but we're choosing, we're making a conscious choice that you and I will say, you are almighty God, and we're gonna come to this place to say, we don't wanna operate with free will. We wanna operate under lordship. Lordship means you make the rules, you make the decisions. And whatever you say, I do. 
It's a different deal. Free will is I go and do however I want to do. Lordship is what do you say? And that's the power of God's word that is in place, inspired by the Holy Spirit, spoken, given to man, that you and I now can get into God's word, be taught and trained what the righteousness of God looks like to say, okay, laying down free will. You, we give you free will back, God. His power move is raised back to life. His power move is we receive salvation. Our power move is we give you free will. Yeah. We give it back to you and receive lordship now. It's the same thing inside of like uh, your company. You go to training, right? If you're in a company, there's a certain level of behavior that is desired if you work in that company, right? If you work at Chick-fil-A today, right? And you perform a, a task for somebody and somebody says, thank you, your response is what? My pleasure. My pleasure. You're darn right it's your pleasure, right? Yeah. right? Now, if you come from Burger King and you're working in just, just, just give me some, you come to Chick-fil-A and you're like, uh, you know, whatever, you're welcome or you say, um, Whatever, you know, you could say whatever you want, but under the behaviors of the Chick-fil-A, if you're going to live according to the corporate values of Chick-fil-A, you have to respond properly according to the values of Chick-fil-A. Okay? It's the same thing when it comes to Christianity. There's a certain set way of living of righteousness that is laid out inside of God's word that when you lay down free will, you say, I am accepting your lordship. And your lordship is going to lead me in a place of righteousness that I'm going to act as Jesus would if he was right here on this earth. Yeah. If you know our mission, state, the mission statement, to lead unchurched people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Right. What does the unchurched person mean? To teach and train individuals to act, think, talk like Jesus would if he was right here on this earth here today. It's that lordship. That's what we are here to do. Power raised him. When power raised a man, Jesus washed us as white as snow, and we have right standing with God here today. He is our Lord. We're following in alignment with his behaviors, his living, to honor him with our lives so that we can be recipients of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Now, let's be very clear. Acts 1.8, Jesus, after he's raised to life, he's hanging out with his disciples, he says, hey, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you're going to be my witnesses. I love this. You're going to be my witness. The Holy Spirit's going to hit you. And when the Holy Spirit hits you, you're going to walk out of this place and then you're going to talk about what I have done for humanity. You're going to tell people that there's hope in Jesus Christ. You're going to tell people that they can have eternal life through Jesus Christ. That, that is what's going to happen. Now, let's be very clear. Sometimes the church can get caught up in the outworking of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and we can get so focused on the gifts of the Holy Spirit that it begins to only benefit the church and not actually the people, individuals that don't know God yet. Yeah. The initial outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the direct effect was, Acts 2, you jump out the day of Pentecost, what happened? They're praying, Holy Spirit, winds, wind rolls in, tongues of fire sit on every individual. They begin to speak in unknown languages. They walk out of an upper room into Jerusalem. People are all there from all over the city, and they're speaking in unknown languages and known languages. All of it's going on. Individuals are like, they're drunk. They're not drunk. They got the power of the Holy Spirit upon them to speak something specifically. There's people in the town for the celebration that's going on in Jerusalem at this moment in time. All different dialects, backgrounds, histories are there. The tongues of fire are being, the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues is being spoken. What are they speaking? They're speaking the gospel message in the known languages of all the people that are there. Sometimes we want to get caught in like, oh, the, the, get the, get the Holy, I'm speaking in tongues. And we're out here just like, Bleh! And it's doing nothing to benefit somebody that does not know Jesus. You may have the gift of the Holy, you know, speaking in tongues, but that's to edify yourself, right? You're edifying yourself. But man, the, the initial evidence of speaking in tongues was to witness to people that did not know Jesus. I'll tell you, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon us should be to compel us to a place to be witnesses. Come on, the church can get so wrapped up in the far end of it we should get wrapped up in how's the Holy Spirit empowering me to reach people that doesn't know Jesus. The prerequisite for receiving the Holy Spirit is 
knowing Jesus. He gives us right standing. As Romans 3.23 says, for everyone has sinned, we've all fallen short of God's glorious standard, yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins, for God presented Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. Prerequisite for receiving the Holy Spirit is salvation. Jesus makes us right. Second thing I will leave you with, Jesus has the power to pour out his spirit on us. It is at Jesus' discretion if he's going to pour it out on us. You look in Acts 2 further on in this conversation when Peter stands up and begins to speak. This is one thing that he says in Acts 2, verse 32. He says, God raised Jesus from the dead and we are all witnesses of this. We saw him be raised. In verse 33, he says, he, now he is exalted to the place of highest honor in heaven at God's right hand. And the Father, as he had promised, gave him the Holy Spirit to pour out on us, just as you see here today. Holy Spirit given to Jesus to pour out on us. Okay? It's in Jesus' power to pour the Holy Spirit out on us. Jesus is the prerequisite to receive the Holy Spirit. Okay? He gives us right standing. Old Testament, it's the atonement of sin through animals, the shed blood, their life for our sin. New Testament, the shed blood of Jesus Christ, his life for our sin. He has made us righteous, holy. He has blood washed us, right? What does John the Baptist say? I baptize you in water, but there's one coming that is gonna baptize you in fire and the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's the whole, that's Jesus Christ. Burns off all of the junk inside of our life, makes us right with God, amen, yeah. Okay, so we're up in it. So Acts 5 says in verse 32, he says, we are witnesses of these things, And so is the Holy Spirit, who is given by God to those who obey him. Obedience, Jesus Christ, and then a right life. Right? It's one thing to receive Jesus, a whole other thing to make a decision to live in righteousness. Righteousness, obedience towards God, prerequisite. I'm living righteous. Holy Spirit. Okay, cool. We're, We're the temples of the Holy Spirit. Paul writes it in 1 Corinthians 6. Corinthians, uh, he says, run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the whole body as this one does. For sexual immorality is sin against what? Your own body. The flesh, appeasing the flesh. Run from it. And really, you could put any sin inside of here, but run from sin. He says the sinful nature, or sorry, uh, verse 19. He said, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with what? A high price. Who, how did he buy you? He bought you with Jesus Christ. Right? What does he say inside of here? You do not belong to yourself. What do you mean I don't belong to myself? I got free will. No, you gave free will up when you received Jesus. Right? I'm walking in righteousness now. I'm living out your word here on this earth, acting, thinking, and talking as if Jesus was if he was right here on this earth. That's what I'm doing. Right? So we are recipients of the Holy Spirit. We are running from sin. Specifically in here, Paul's talking about sexual sin. Run from it because don't you know you're a temple of the Holy Spirit? God bought us with a high price. We're not our own. He says, so you must honor God with your body. Come on, we live in a society today that is trying to get us to believe that our feelings should dictate our actions. You got flesh on your body. You got a sinful nature on your, in your life. You have an enemy that is trying to work against you and I to go, live on the whim of our emotions, right? Oh, I feel it. Well, isn't it funny that we're in a secular humanistic society that basically is saying you are the highest form of authority upon the face of the earth. So if you feel it, you should be able to do it. There's, there is no other Lord. There is no other, there is no other standard. You're the standard. Whatever you feel, just do. And it's the lie of the enemy to get individuals so wrapped up in feelings that they lose sight of righteousness. Come on, we are selfish, sinful people uh, susceptible to the nature, the selfish, sinful nature that is about this world. The enemy is working against us. We will feel things, but it does not mean we have to live according to the whim of our emotions. Why? Because we have the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome inside of this life. Amen? I'll tell you. So this is what we got to do. If we have access to the power, then we got to live by the power. If we have access to the power, then we should live by the power. If the Holy Spirit 
you know, Jesus Christ prerequisite, living an obedient prerequisite. Now we are the temples of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is living inside of us. We have power to unlimited resources now. We're talking the presence of God, the all-powerful, all-knowing God. We have access to it that lives on the inside of us. We got to live by that power. You know, why is it, isn't it interesting that whenever a, a, a communist country, they limit access to information, why? Because the knowledge, the power of knowledge exposes individual to an understanding that there's something greater. And if there's something greater, that maybe somebody might revoke. So they contain information to hold people captive to ignorance. I'll tell you today, what I believe for our church is, I don't want us operating in ignorance that we don't understand that we got the power to the Holy Spirit that we can face anything inside of this life and overcome. We don't have to live on the whim of our circumstances. We don't have to live on the whim of our situation. We can live as overcomers here today. We don't have to live on the whim of our feelings. It's okay to feel sin. It's not okay to act on it. It's okay to feel a certain way, but it's not okay to act on it. The world will tell you, just, it's just you. If you want to do it, just do it. But God's word's like, no, 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 no. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. You may feel it, but walk in righteousness to, and trust the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome it. Don't live on that. I say this from a perspective as a young man that I lived in insecurity. For a large portion of my young adult life, people thought I was an angry ignorant, arrogant person. Because I was so insecure, I'd push the world away. I didn't think they would accept me for who I was. And I'll tell you, at the age of 17, I became a new creation in Christ Jesus. And I'll tell you, the moment that I found this place where I'm like, cool, I received the Holy Spirit now, and I no longer have to accept these ideas and these thoughts. I'm this new creation now. Well, praise God. And I believe me, I stepped out. And what you see today is the bona fide, real deal, holy field, redeemed individual that the power of the Holy Spirit is at work inside of. That's what you see. So I had some issues. We'll just throw it out there. I got some issues. I would show up at work and individual would be like, um, are you like this all the time? One day I had this individual that I was working closely with that all of a sudden was just like, you're the, you know, you're an arrogant, selfish, self-righteous, and you think you're better than everybody else. But he just started going off on me. I'm like, uh, uh, I love you. <laughs> I don't know what to do right now. I was like, ah. But I'll tell you, I felt, I just felt, I was condemned. It was condemning. But it was, it was upon my new creation. It was upon who I am now in Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit that I can look at my life and be like, dude, I'm, I'm good. I'm living as an overcomer. I'm no longer a victim to my circumstances. I am free in Jesus Christ. And, and sometimes when we come to this place where we are free in Jesus Christ, no longer limited through the power of the, the enemy that has held us captive, right? You know, has us in this broken place where we're a victim. No, no, no. There ain't no victims in Jesus Christ. Man, we just got scars that make us stronger. That's all it is. We're not victims. Are you kidding me? No, our, our Savior saved us. He loved us so much he came for us. And I'll tell you, that, you know, kind of rising up inside of that, I felt a little like, ah, is there something wrong with me? After that guy, I mean, he just like went off on me. He got written up for it. It was awesome. But um, <laughs> shall not come against God's chosen. <laughs> But I remember walking away thinking, God, is there, what am I doing wrong? God, what? And I felt bad. Yeah. I just remember the power of the Holy Spirit just beginning to speak to me. Right, I've called you, I've equipped you. You're going to live in a world where not everybody's going to like you. Yeah. Come on, just keep on pressing forward and doing what I'm calling you to do. And I just remember the counselor of the Holy Spirit beginning to lift my head up again. And I'll tell you, just getting on about the business that he's called me to do. You know, here we are seven years, eight years later and seeing what God is doing here today. I'm glad I listened to the Holy Spirit and not my humanity that wanted just to crawl up into a ball and go back to an old world. I'll tell you, the Holy Spirit has the power that we can face issues, circumstances, challenges. We can look them in the face and say, sin, you have no power. We're going to live by the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome inside of this life. We will not fall victim and we will not fall short of the glory that God has destined us to live in. Galatians 5 says this. So, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your life. Come on, you're here today and you're a Christian. You've given your life to Jesus Christ. You've been saved and redeemed. The blood of Jesus has washed you as white as snow. You're walking in obedience today and the Holy Spirit is dwelling on the inside of you. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you every single day. 
Wake up sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leading inside of your life. Holy Spirit, what are you calling me to do today? How are you calling me to respond today? How am I walking in forgiveness? Where am I walking in peace today? Holy Spirit, my natural humanity, I don't want to fall victim to it. I want to rise up in the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome. It's not, if we're not careful, it says this inside of here, then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Being led by the Holy Spirit, then you won't do what your sinful nature craves. Say it again. Led by the Spirit, you will not do what your sinful nature craves. Okay? We've just already said it. Our society is, our society is <laughs> justifying sin because we don't want to come back to a place of truth. The Holy Spirit is here. Jesus says, I am sending you an advocate that will lead you in truth. Yeah. We live in a world today that's trying to push truth out so that our truth can be the highest form of truth. If we're not led by the Spirit, then we will, we will justify what this is about to say. So these things are going on. It says sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. The Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out what? Your good intentions. We're all destined to honor God with our lives. But if we fall victim to sin, not being led by the Spirit, then we will not carry out what God has destined us to do, the good things, the good works. So it goes on to say this. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. Verse 19. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. <clears throat> now this is where it's going to get into the nitty gritty, okay? So this is where we don't make excuses. This is where, okay, we identify, okay, we're struggling here, we're struggling here, we got this issue here. God, we're not going to justify it. We're going to say, Holy Spirit, empower us to overcome it. We may be a victim of our past, but we don't live as a victim in our future. Why? Because we have been saved and redeemed by Jesus Christ. We are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Okay? The world will tell you, justify your past. You are... The way you are today, you're fine. You're all good in the hood. That's not, the, that's not scripture. That's not Bible. Bible's was like, you're becoming a new creation in Christ Jesus. You're, you're being developed every single day. Right? So this goes on to say, it's very clear that when you are led by the sinful nature, there's sexual immorality. There's a misunderstanding of what sexuality is when you are led by a sinful nature. We have a world today that's trying to understand sexuality. I mean, it's a massive conversation going on in our country right now. People can't grapple with, like, God has set up sexuality very clearly. So what do we do? Because we don't want to walk in that truth, we'll just justify, well, that's okay. Well, you just do what you want to do. However you want to do it, it's all good. That's the sinful nature that we're trying to justify. That's not, that's not scripture, that's not truth. Okay? So we got to be careful that we don't fall victim, right? We got to be able to stand up and say, no, 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 we're good. We love we love all people, but this is God's, this is God's standard, and we want to we help people in the righteousness of God, understand how to live it, okay? You got impurity, the inability to uh, a place of not honoring your life and the purity and the righteousness that God has called you to. You got lustful pleasures, the living out of the desires of lust. You got idolatry, putting other things above God, whatever it may be. Sorcery, seeking out other faiths, other religions, hostility, harboring issues on the inside of your life and causing problems, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, all these issues of the heart that cause chaos out through our lives. You get into the, the latter part of here, drunkenness. And that's really any intoxication that's outside of, you know, staying in a sober mind that God has called us to. We say around here all the time, is drinking a sin? No, drinking is not a sin. Getting drunk is a sin, right? You're incapacitated to make proper decisions in the righteousness of God, right? Anybody ever been drunk? You know you're not there like, you know, I'm a, some of you guys probably will, I'm a minister right now. You know, Jesus, I want to tell you something right now, you know. It gets a little weird, right? We've all met that guy, right? We've all met him. But when we're incapacitated, we remove ourselves from the ability to do what God has called us to be a light into a dark world. 
You got wild parties. We can indulge in these wild activities and all other sins like these. These are just the product of the outworking, okay? So is there judgment in this? No, but there is conviction. Let's be very careful. The church is not here to be like, you're this and you're that and I can't believe and you're going to hell. You know, that's not us, okay? What are we? We're here to be a light into a broken world. There's people that are all around us in our workplaces that have grown up in broken homes that just don't understand who they are. We, we got to understand, we got to love people where they're at. That's why Jesus was condemned, because he, he empathized with people that just didn't know. Yeah. He would go to a tax collector's house. He would meet with the prostitute. Why? Because he was empathizing with who they were. It's who we are. If we're led by the Holy Spirit, we can be in a place where we know what sin looks like. We don't justify it in our life. We're convicted, and then we trust God to overcome it but then we live a life where we encourage people to walk in righteousness. We're not here to be judgmental. We are here to be a person of love for people that don't know God. Love people where they're at. Go on to say that let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life, let's be very clear, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Straight up, real deal, holy field, all up in your face with a whole lot of grace. Just rhyming. (laughs) All up in your face with a whole lot of grace. I gotta use that some other time. (laughs) But this type of life, when we're led by the selfish, sinful nature, clearly the Holy Spirit does not work inside of our life that we are trying to walk in righteousness. If that is the case, the highest form of our life is to please self. An individual that is living that life, not in submission to God and Jesus as Lord, the Bible's clear, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay. I got real. It's real. Real deal, Holyfield, right? But I stand behind this because my own life, I walked in some crazy jacked up stuff. A lot of this stuff inside of here, I was walking in, okay? My sin doesn't look like your sin, but my God looks like your God. My Savior looks like your Savior. And if he did it for me, I believe he can do it for you. Okay? I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. My desires are differently. Do I struggle? You bet your backside I do. But I say, Holy Spirit, help me overcome. I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't want to walk in this anymore. I don't want to harbor these things anymore. I want to be a new creation in Christ Jesus. That's real deal holy feel. Come on, we got to love the truth of God's word. We got to hunger and thirst for righteousness. We got to desire God to be at work inside of our lives. Tell you the fruit that comes out of being led by the Holy Spirit. It says this in verse 23, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, come on, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. All these things are incredible attributes that when you're led by the Holy Spirit, you can love somebody that does not love you. You can be patient with people that just don't understand. Why? Because you can live in a situation empowered by the Holy Spirit that is at work inside of your life that is constantly leading you back to the truth and not into your humanity that you need to justify your life and you need to condemn them to make yourself feel better or you need to tell them where they're going wrong to justify whatever's going on in your life. You can come to a place where you're counseled by the Holy Spirit to do the work of the ministry to see unchurched people, lost people come to know Jesus. What does Jesus say? They will know you by your love. The world will look at your actions and say, man, they got to know Jesus. They got to know something. Something's going on there. They should be angry. They should be frustrated. They should be resentful. But man, they just received it in grace and operated in love. I just don't get it. Man, they were unjustly, you know, uh, treated by this person, but they were so patient with them. I just don't understand it. It's the power of the Holy Spirit to live inside of a world to make a statement with your life because you're not a victim of the selfish, sinful nature that you're trying to justify and you're trying to rectify and you're trying to, you know, show people what's up. You're just living in a place of the Holy Spirit, letting the qualities flow out of you to be a representation of who Jesus is as if he was here on this earth. Come on, it's led by the Holy Spirit. He's leading us in truth. 
The Holy Spirit is our advocate. He's working on our behalf. He's working behind the scenes. He's our advocate. The Holy Spirit is our counselor. He's here to lift us back up. I mean, Jesus said, hey, go into all the world baptizing. Matthew 28, 19, 20. The latter part of what he's saying there is, and lo, I will be with you until the ends of the earth. I I will always be with you. What does he tell his disciples? It's better that I go away so that I can send the comforter to be with you. Why is that? Because I'm one man. Greater you will do on this earth than I do. What is he saying? I'm one man in one area, but the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you and you're going to go out all over the place and make a difference inside of this world. Oh, we may see people raised from the dead. We may not. We may see tumors evaporated in people's bodies. We may not. But whether or not we see the exact thing that Jesus did, what we do know is the work of God all over the earth is greater than what Jesus did in the small region that he was in. Greater we will do here on this earth than Jesus did himself. Let's go. Last thing I would say is Jesus is our convictor. Our Holy Spirit is our convictor. You know, they portrayed on movies as the devil over here and then that little angel over here, right? (laughs) Jesus says, I'm sending the advocate who will lead you in all truth. The Holy Spirit will bring back to remembrance scripture. What does that mean? Circumstances you are in, it will give you the wisdom of God's word to know how to respond. As I said earlier, when that individual came down on me, the Holy Spirit began to counsel and lift me back up. Right? And in parts of my life that are jacked up and I'm working on, the Holy Spirit's like, man, You're getting off in this area of your life. You're getting too focused on yourself. Hey, watch your eye. That's the Holy Spirit convicting us, revealing the truth to us to say, hey, you're not as good as you think you are. Stay humble and hungry. Come on, you need to work on love. You need to work on patience. You need to work on grace. I'm working on patience, that's for sure. I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm gonna work on patience, I think, for the rest of my life. But this is the Holy Spirit at work inside of our life. We grab a Red Bull every single day to cut through what? Our humanity. You may grab a bang, you may grab a monster, whatever you grab, you grab whatever you grab. A four espresso coffee, but what are we doing? We're saying my humanity is a little challenge. I need a little pick me up right now. That's what we're saying. Let me pick me up. Let me tell you the Holy Spirit is your spiritual pick me up. It is your spiritual trainer every single day. If you had a trainer show up at your house at 6 a.m. every single day that had your eating plan worked out, had your workout plan worked out, you'd look completely different in six months than you do today. I'll tell you, if you tap into the Holy Spirit, amen, somebody, amen. Lord knows I need one. If we allow the Holy Spirit to be our spiritual trainer, spiritually we're going to look completely different in six months than we do today. Be okay with a little adversity from people that are like, ah, what's going on? You think you're better than everybody else? Like, no. (laughs) But I do know Jesus and the Holy Spirit is at work in my life. (laughs) I do. It's good. Amen. I'm saying today, allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Don't be at the whim of your selfish, sinful nature and justify your issues. Don't justify your issues. Allow the Holy Spirit to convict and then go to Jesus and allow him to correct, empower, strengthen, and allow yourself to overcome, okay? Work on one area at a time, maybe two areas at a time. If you're struggling in a certain area of your life, work on it. It's okay. Come on, we're Pearl Street Church, a church for the unchurched. You ain't got to have it all together. We're all broken people coming through these doors, but man, we're trying to get right with Jesus and live a life holy before him. And I'll tell you, if we can continue to do that, God's going to be glorified inside of these doors. We're going to be, we're going to, Jesus is going to be glorified in our city because we don't have to have it all together, man. Jesus has it all together. We're just trying to fall in line with that. So I'd say today, as we just stand up to our feet today, I want to pray this prayer that the conviction of the Holy Spirit that is leading you in truth, that you would be sensitive to that conviction, that you would not justify your sin today. I would not justify my sin, but we would all be humble and submissive to the Spirit's leading that we would develop in the righteousness that God has for us today. That Father, you know, that where we're at today is not where we're gonna be at in six months. 
but praise God because in six months we need to be at a different place in order to reach people that are going to be in that sphere of our influence then. Come on, let's get better every single day through the leading of the Holy Spirit, the best spiritual trainer that we, upon the face of the earth. God, we come to you today, Lord, and we pray that your Holy Spirit, God, that Father is operating for everybody inside of this life, God, that has come to you. Father, we pray today as a church that we are open and sensitive to the correction of the Holy Spirit inside of our life. Refine us today. Expose our issues here today. Father, tell, in, <laughs> open our eyes to the things that you want us to work on today. Father, if it's an issue of our own heart, that Lord, we are holding on to things that you, we need to let go and give it to you. God, if there's things that people have said against us, God, I pray that we just let them go. Lord, if there's behaviors today that we're operating in, whether it's sexually, God, there's behaviors today, whether it's in our workplace of dissension and division, God, hostility, quarreling, God, if we got an angry spirit, Lord, I pray that you would reveal it, Lord, and we would have the humility to ask for forgiveness and for the power to overcome. God, you release your power on our church here today, your conviction, your correction, and Lord, your power to overcome in the issues of our lives. God, lift our heads today as a counselor. Father, reveal that who, who we are today, truly who we are in your word, God. Not who we have developed to be on our humanity, not on our generational dysfunction, but God, who you have destined us to be here today. Father, reveal it to us and empower us to live it in Jesus' name. And everybody says... Amen and amen. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in here today. I pray this message has encouraged you, it has strengthened you, and has empowered you to live the life that God has destined you to live. Now go ahead and subscribe and click that icon. Do me a favor, click the icon that looks like a little bell that you can stay up to date with every video that we post. Now, if this is your church home, you can click down below to be faithful in your giving. Outside of that, have a great week and continue to make a difference in the world in which God has destined you to lead in.